ya tosha Mwenyezi Mungu kwamba tuko hai kwamba tuko hapa ya tosha sifa na shukrani ziwe kwako e Mungu uliye juu Asante Mwenyezi Mungu kwa vile watupenda hata wakata tukupendi unatujali hata wakata tukujali watukrimia baraka zako hata wakati atustahili baraka zako kwa vile tuwachafu uchafu wa dhambi tusamee dhambi zetu ndio tukubalike mbele yako Asante Mwenyezi Mungu jana tuliachana ukatuongoza na baraka zako mpaka vikao vyetu tofauti usiku wakati tulikuwa tumepotea uzigizini we hulali ukatuchunga kutokana na maafa yote ya mofu shetani na ukatuamusha tukiwa chini ya baraka zako ukatubarikia safari zote za mbali na karibu na ukatuleta katika kongomano hii sifa na shukrani ziwe kwako mwenyezi Mungu uliye juu asante kwa sababu kwa imani tunaamini ya kwamba una baraka tele 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 zetu kila mmoja wetu na hasa katika kongomano hili tuajikabidhi mikononi mwako tukikuomba unje utawale tawala mawazo mazungumzo vitendo vyetu zob vyote ambavyo Mwenyezi Mungu tutachangia katika ufanisi wa kanisa lako siku ya leo na hasa Mwenyezi Mungu tunapoanza katika kutafakari neno lako la Biblia twajiweka chini ya mamlaka yako njo tutawale umbariki mteule wako Mwenyezi Mungu na umuwezeshe kusimama vyema katika mpangilio wako wa kumbariki na wa kutubariki sisi asante mumba wetu njo utamalaki tamalaki katika ibanda hii katamalaki katika kongomano hili tuanjiachilia mikononi mwako tutawale tutawale na ni katika jina safi la Yesu Kristo tuomba na kuamini alonzi prayer together our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us Lead us not in temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We can take our seats. As the fraternity of the Presbyterian Church of East Africa, we are blessed to have one of our own who will be taking us through the Bible study. And this is none other than Dr. Kelvin Murithi. Dr. Kelvin Murithi is our lecturer and end of department, Practical Theology, St. Paul's University. Dr. Murithi is our holder of PhD from the University of South Africa. But before he went to theology, he is a trained engineer. He's an author of apologetics in Africa. He is married to Jessica. He is the father to Noah. Brethren, let us appreciate Dr. Kelvin as he takes the podium to take us through Bible study. Karibu sana, Dr. Moderator of the 24th General Assembly, uh, Right Reverend
Patrick Fego Mutahi and all GA officials present, mothers and fathers in the faith, teaching and ruling elders present, other commissioners, invited guests, brothers and sisters, and dear friends who I see here today, all other protocols observed. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe tena. Praise the Lord for those who need the translation. Moderator sir, let me say that I am very humbled to stand before this gathering, this assembly, to proclaim the word of God. This is my home church, and uh, this is yet the, the auspiciousness of this occasion really humbles me, and I am really grateful to the GEO office for this invitation to share God's word. I bring greetings also from St. Paul's University, specifically from Reverend Canon Professor James Combo, who is the VC there, and whom you serve with uh, in the University Council and as our trustee, and I am here through his permission, for which, again, I am very grateful. Let me also say that uh, we are mourning, as you may have heard. Yesterday, we lost one of our student ministers, our brother Simon Kemondo, uh, and even as we, as we mourn and grieve, we do so with the hope that he shall rise again in glory. But I am happy to say that staff and students of the PCA community continue to shine. Uh, by God's grace, we continue to serve uh, and to leave an impact uh, in, uh, in that university. And lastly, before we look at our passage for the day on a light note, uh, you heard that I am married to Jessica Murugi. Uh, and in my language, we know what Murugi means, isn't it? Uh, for the one who does not know, you can translate for them. But all I can say, uh, because I used to serve with young people, I was 1GB before I met uh, Jessica Murugi. 1GB means someone who is very uh, anamashida mingi, slender. Uh, but by the grace of God, uh, she has done me well. And the Lord has blessed us with a son called Noah. And we say to him, we hope that he shall build an ark for his generation. Amen? Let me read for us God's word that we shall spend our time together today, which is coming to us from Joshua chapter 24, verse 14 and 15. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me, and my house, we will serve the Lord, the word of God for the people of God. You can imagine the prayer and preparation that it has taken to address the General Assembly. And as I was thinking how we should spend our time together for the next three days, especially thinking that this theme that we are given during the assembly is a theme that it should guide us for the next three years. I sensed upon prayer and reflection that we dwell on this text. So what we shall do for the next three days, we shall read the same text. But we shall look at this text by exploring three important questions that should guide our service in the next three years. So for this first day, day one, I would like to propose to us, brothers and sisters, that we are invited to answer this question, which I shall take as my sermon topic. Who are we really serving? Who are we really serving? This is a question that we will be asking today. And then tomorrow, we shall explore the question, who are we serving with? Who are we serving with? And then the last day, day three, on Friday, we will look at how will we serve? 
how will we serve? I take this from Joshua's declaration there and the end of verse 15. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Who are we really serving? Joshua is telling us that we are serving the Lord. But we want to consider the problems that may arise in our service to the Lord. Joshua also says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Who are we serving with? Again, there is a clue there that we find. But as for me and my house, Joshua says, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. So how are we to serve the Lord? Let me pray for us as we begin the sermon. Father, we are grateful for this sacred moment uh, behind your sacred desk as we listen to your sacred word. Your word is eternal and true and never changes. Your word is life. So Lord, grant us life in these moments together we ask through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. I was uh, keenly paying attention yesterday uh, in the discussion, the debate between paying taxes <laughs> and uh, paying cess. Uh, that was a very interesting discussion and debate that I found, uh, I must confess. And uh, in light of uh, some of these discussions that are at the heart of our communities, our social and cultural context, the challenges that we are facing as a country, uh, we think about, for example, the emergence of cults, uh, these uh, false teachings that are, 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 are taking our people away from the word of life. We consider the social and economical issues, we consider the political issues, and I was asking myself, as the Presbyterian Church of East Africa, what kind of service can we give to our nation? What kind of service can we give to this country that the Lord has, has given us? Uh, Joshua here defines that service and he says that we should serve him that is God in sincerity and in faithfulness. I would add that the kind of service that we need in our country today, I would define it as service that is inspiring, service that is faithful, service that is bold and courageous, service, service, service that is creative, service that is sound, service that is future-oriented and progressive, taking our people forward in the plans and vision that God has, has for us. But if we are to offer this service as a church, brothers and sisters, I propose to us that we must be clear on who we are really serving. And so that is a question I am asking us. Who are we really serving in the Presbyterian Church of East Africa? And you could localize this for yourself. Who are you serving? The book of Joshua, we know, is a historical narrative, together with some of the other tech books in the Old Testament, like Judges and Ruth and First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, and others. It tells the historical story of the people of God as they move forward into the plans of God, as God is using them to be a blessing to the nations and eventually culminating in Jesus Christ. The book also finds itself after the Israelites have been redeemed, right? Have, they have been saved from the slavery of Egypt. But in the book of Joshua, the writer will spend time to show how the people of God are settled into the promised land. The promised land that God had promised to his people. And so in the book of Joshua, what is very, very important here is to see the God of the covenant, isn't it? The God who is faithful to the promise that he has made to his people. The God who never lets his word fail. The God who fulfills his promises. The God who is faithful and true. The God who can be trusted. And so Joshua connects God of the covenant, the God who comes to our father Abraham through the Abrahamic covenant, the Mosaic covenant, and here we find Joshua actually renewing that covenant that God had made with his people. So tracing the covenant promises of God to his people to inherit the land is a very central theological theme in our text today. We know also of the story of Joshua, a young man uh, who was a, a slave boy in the, in, the, in the country of Egypt when the Israelites were in slavery. 
But by the time we are getting to Joshua 24, Joshua is a valiant soldier of the Lord, a military leader who has led the people of God to the promised land. And we are wondering, what can we learn from this man, Joshua? I think that there are several things that this passage is inviting us to reflect. And in this time together for the next few minutes, I wanted to present to us a challenge that can come when we consider service. Who are we really serving? Are we serving the rival gods? Or are we serving the true and the living God, the God of promise? This is the contrast that we find ourselves in as the people of God. Now, this passage tells us that Joshua is challenging the people to serve the living God, not to serve the gods of his fathers. His father was who? Terah. We learn that Terah was not a person in the family of God. Terah and that generation were idol worshippers. In fact, there are some stories that are given by some Jewish commentators. Uh, the story is called Abraham and the Idol Shop. It is not a canonical text, but I think that story uh, presents this problem to us in an interesting way. So it's, it goes that because Terah was an idol keeper and an idol maker, Abraham one day was in the shop uh, of his father. The father maybe had gone to buy some extra things for the shop. Uh, and Abraham is in this shop, and in this shop where there are many idols, uh, there is a visitor who comes with some food. As a Kenyan, I was thinking this must be a farmer, uh, and it has been raining and there is food in the farm that he or she has harvested. And they have brought that food to who? To Abraham in the idol shop. To do what? To give food <laughs> to the idols. Because after all, idols need a lot of help and assistance. And so uh, the seller comes with food to Abraham and tells Abraham, Abraham, feed the idols. And Abraham takes the food and puts it down. But Abraham, because... He is a man of faith, these interpreters are telling us. He takes a big nyundo. And you know these idols are of different sizes. There is the big idol and there are other small idols. So what Abraham does, takes the big nyundo and destroys the small idols. And then he hears the footsteps of the father. And what Abraham decides to do is to put the nyundo in the hand of the big idol. And Terah asks, who has done this? And Abraham says, it is the big idol. <laughs> and Daddy Terra says, Abraham, you are lying to me. I know you are lying to me. You know those lies you, you used to make when we are eating sugar and it is here. And we are lying that we have not eaten sugar. That is Abraham. But Abraham, we find in this narrative, the storyteller presents us, Abraham is willing to stand alone in the worship of the true God rather than worshiping these things that we have made with our hands. These things that we are trying to find our life in, but will never deliver. Things created in the image and likeness of men. This, this narrative is not a canonical text, but I think that there is something here for us as we consider the various uh, ministry positions and spaces that God has given us to ask ourselves, who are we really? Who are we really serving? The temptation for us is to lose our main target. And to be swayed to pay allegiance to something else rather than God. Someone else rather than God. Something else rather than God. I would define these things as rival gods. Of course, gods with small g. And these gods have a cunning ability to draw our attention away from God. And to place our eyes and our allegiance and our trust on things that will not give us life. What are these two examples from the text of rival gods for us as a church? Rival god number one, I would call gods, traditional gods. Traditional gods. Let me begin by saying that our traditions are important, that our cultures are important, and there is a lot that we can learn, and many of our fathers and mothers in the faith here have taught us well. In fact, very Reverend John Gatto uh, in his book draws some interesting parallels between Gikuyu religious tradition and 
the uh, Hebrew or the Judaic uh, worship. And there have been a lot that have been said by people like Mbiti and others. I won't spend time there. There is a lot. The aspect of community, respect of elders, etc., etc. Very good things from our traditions. But brothers and sisters, in honoring our traditions, we must be wary of veering away from Jesus, Jesus Christ. A lot of calls are inviting us to go back to other covenants. And I, what I find interesting in this call to go back to other covenants, to go back to our roots, to go back to some of our religious practices, especially those that we take away from Christ is this. How far should we go? Should we just go to sacrifice goats, for example, or should we also go all the way and begin walking around with sheep's clothes? Because that is the call to go back to what? To traditional religious practices. I find that if there are other invitations to move to other covenants that would do away with the covenant, the new covenant that we have with Jesus Christ, we need to draw a clear line and say that we shall not worship other gods because we worship the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world, that we were not saved by the blood of goats and sheep, but we were saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And we are invited to worship the true and living God, the one who loves us and has sent his son to die for us. As a church, we need to be clear and draw a line when it comes to those who might invite us to worship traditional, traditional gods. These traditional gods, after all, will be like those gods of terror, territorial gods who only function in a certain area, tribal gods who have to be given foods and to be appeased. The brothers and sisters, this is to sell our birthright against worshipping the true and the living God, the God who has created our world, the God who, who has redeemed our world, the God who is in control of our lives, the sovereign Lord, always in control of everything that is happening in the world, bringing everything to its proper end. This is the God whom we should really be serving, not the gods, the traditional gods. Brothers and sisters, let me then present for us rival God number two. I would call this God the God of Mammon. I think this was initially hinted at by our moderator, but I would say that the God of Mammon represents uh, this hunger and this uh, desire for, for money, desire for political power and office. I would define this God of Mammon as a, the use of worldly measures for the church instead of godly measures for the church. God worldly measures of success when it comes to defining what ministry is rather than God's definition of success for what ministry should really be about. But you see, Mammon speaks to our deepest desire for success, for, for safety and security. We think the Mammon language is restricted to the social and political life of our country. So for example... In a bid to serve at the altar of Mammon, some have said that we are sacrificing our medics to save money for building or refurbishing some other shiny projects. The spirit of Mammon in the political life of our country. But Mammon is not just restricted to the political class. Mammon! Mammon is very, very alive and present in church altars. How, does, how can Christians, how does a church, how can churches be seen as serving mammon? Let me offer us a few examples. The church serves mammon when she focuses on platforms at the expense of people. Mammon will even sacrifice the church's servants we may say we do not have money, and the way we treat those who have served us, we quickly cut away their contracts without discussion. But we have money for other projects. Mammon. 
Mammon will drive us, will inspire us to offer pastoral care. But how will we offer pastoral care as per the terms of Mammon? Mammon will invite us to offer pastoral care to a specific group of families in the local congregation, to a specific district in the local congregation. Mammon will inspire us to provide pastoral care to specific districts and specific church members at the expense of those who need us the most. Mammon lies to us that we are serving God when in essence we are serving at her altars. And there are two stories in this book that show us how the people of God sometimes we are away from God. The defeat of the Israelites at Ai captured in Joshua 7, 1 to 5. God had commanded the Israelites that when they go to this land as part of the conquering, they should devote to destruction uh, everything. Now I know that language sounds very violent and many people have a problem with the Old Testament texts when it comes to the problem of violence and God and many young people whom I have interacted with ask this God seems to be what is his problem and as good theologians we will do well to engage the text further I do not have time for that but the Israelites rather than doing what God had said they decided to keep a little bit <laughs> for themselves recall Ananias and Sapphira in the New Testament but God is so gracious you know what Though initially they are defeated, God grants them victory when they actually come back to their senses and turn back to God. When they remember that they are serving the living God and do what he has said, things are safe with them. Example two is the Gibeonites' deception. Joshua 9 tells the story of Israelite, Israelites making a deal. And you know we are a country that likes to make deals <laughs> with tricksters without consulting God. The consequence is what we would call compromise. Think about our life in the church. Think about our life in the marketplace. Compromise. We need to go back, brothers and sisters, to trusting God's means for growing God's mission. We need to go back to trusting God's means of growing God's, God's mission. This is God's work and it must be done God's way. Ah, no, 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 no. It is not me. I am not serving uh, rival gods in this church. We do not serve rival. In this country, we are a very Christian country. Let me give you a few, three ways we could tell those who are serving rival gods. One, they draw glory to themselves, their abilities, and their positions. I would define this as the problem of focus. A focus on self rather than a focus on God. Second characteristic is that they do anything in order to get ahead, not just in the church. Those here who are serving in businesses or in the marketplace would know this. People who do anything to do what? To get ahead, I would define this as the problem of method. So their focus is wrong, their method will be wrong. And you know what will result? Wrong results. The goal, number three, they end up dividing people rather than building up the kingdom of God. Problem of results. What this passage will do for us is to connect God who keeps his covenant with our life today in this covenant setting of our passage. What we find is a different picture of the one whom we should serve, that we should serve the God of promise. If we are to receive the call from God's word today for a renewed and refreshed ministry of the Presbyterian Church to our people and to the end of the world, I think this passage is looking at us, it is speaking to us and telling us you need to refocus your attention back to the God of promise. What is he like? The passage tells us. This is the God who takes initiative. This is the God who Loved us before we first did what? Loved him. This is the God who called us, not because of anything special in us, but because of his graces. God who takes initiative. Remember the story of Abraham? God comes to this family that does not know God. We were told they are idol worshippers, but chooses to have a relationship with this father of faith. 
and to be a blessing to the nations. God who takes initiative. Number two, God whose mission is to redeem. God of Moses, the one who redeems the Israelites from slavery, but also the redeemer of Israel. Joshua 24, 5 to 7. What is he like, this God of promise? God who is gracious, faithful in the wilderness wanderings. God now settling his people, finally. After all the ti tiredness, after all the pandemics, after all the pain and after all the trouble, the God who is faithful to fulfill his word. What is this God of promise like? Joshua tells us in verse 19 and 21, God who is holy and just. Holy in that he is set apart. He is different from us. He is unique and he calls us to live differently. But God who is just. God who uses fair balances. God who is holy and just. Brothers and sisters, as I draw to an end, this is a question before us. Gods, traditional gods, contemporary gods of Mammon, or the true and living God, the God of promise, the God who keeps his covenant, who will you serve? Who will you serve this day? Rival gods will not inspire faithful and sincere service. Rival gods will not inspire creative, stable, and sound service, the kind of service that the church is called to offer today. Brothers and sisters, only if the object of our service is the God of promise can we offer this kind of special service, deeply, effectively, and relevant service for our communities. It will not happen unless we are serving the God of service. We should say with Joshua, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Gracious God, here we stand before you as a Presbyterian Church of East Africa. We recall your goodness and faithfulness as the people of Israel did we have seen your hand. We have our fathers and mothers of the faith here who have served you faithfully and who continue to inspire us today, Lord. We gather here across the generations acknowledging your faithfulness in our individual lives but collectively as a household of faith. We have seen your hand. We can confess that you have done great things for us even as we have been giving thanks as a church in the past few weeks. Forgive us, dear Lord. We confess that our hearts have been inspired by the wrong things. As the psalmist says, turn my eyes from worthless things so that I may find a light in your law. May this be the inspiration of our service. Remind us once again that it is you who we serve. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray and believe. Amen. 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 We thank God for his word to us. Who are you serving? And monitor as we continue to unfold this 24th General Assembly, we must continue to believe as the church that God has very good intentions for us. The monitor has been led to give us a young person to be the one leading in this very important session in the General Assembly. We have just come from remembering, as we were doing one that three years, that this church is a product of youth. And therefore, what a coincidence. And it is not a coincidence, it is godly that we have a young person leading the General Assembly in Bible study. Praise be to God. And this is the direction, church, that we need to take as we come out of this 24th General Assembly. We have come to the end of this session and we are so grateful, uh, Dr. Kelvin, and we are so expectant of what God will give us through you tomorrow and on Friday.
Once again, thank you. God bless you. Have a very good day. Because of our time, brethren, we now need to prepare ourselves for the memorial service. We will have St. Andrew's choir, even as we sit, give us some few uh, hymns. We will ask the moderators of the presbyteries to uh, retreat to the vestry so that they can robe and uh, come prepared because we have the Holy Communion. I am sure that we have elders set for that. If we do not have, we would ask a number of elders uh, to join us so we can have the, the pairing elders of the presbytery moderators. Uh, we may not use all of them, but we need to have them because we need to do this together, the ministers and the elders. So, please, presbytery moderators, uh, we can be standing so that you can finish this session with the ones of grace, and then we will be able to now retreat, and within a very short time, we will come again. Can we be standing for the ones of grace to head this session? And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Thank you. God bless you. We can take our seats. Uh, Presbytery monitors, officials of the General Assembly. And Dr. Kevin has some few copies of the book that he has written, so you can prepare so that with time you can get your copy. Okay, okay, okay. Moderators, excuse Kidogo Choir. Sorry, moderators, we are rubbing in the new church hall down there where we were doing, where the business does their, uh, their meals. That is where the moderators are rubbing from. It is the moderator of the General Assembly and the officials of the General Assembly that are rubbing from here because the room is just too small. So, moderators in the new church hall. That's where we are rubbing. Thank you. Johnston Jenga, as Miss Priest is hyphened at the notebook, and there is a name attached to them. So if you have a iPad, a notebook for Reverend Johnston Jenga, please you can uh, give it to us. We will give it to him. Thank you so very much.
Uh, thank you so much for uh, that moment of praise. And we are going to start this uh, memorial service uh, by singing uh, hymn number 383, Come Children, Join and Sing. That will be our first hymn, and uh, I request the choir uh, to kindly lead us in that hymn as it gets projected. na tuombe tuombe Mwenyezi Mungu baba uishie milele tunakuja bele zako asubuhi ya leo tukinyenyekea sana tukioba msamaha wa dhambi zetu tuomba tena kukubalika mashoni mwako ili Mungu neema yako ikaweze kuwa pamoja nasi Kitusamee Bwana tuomba ya kwamba utubariki na ubariki ibada hii ya kipekee tuliyo nayo asubuhi ya leo Baba tunakuheshimu tukisema unastahili na hakuna Mungu mwingine kama wewe. Tuogoze mpaka uh, kutoka mwanzo wa ibada hii katikati na hata mwisho na Mungu tufanikishie ibanda. Baliki ushirika huu wetu wa kipekee na uweze kutuogoza na roho wako mtakatifu. Tuomba ya kwamba uwe pamoja nasi. Na ni katika jina la Yesu tuomba na kuamini. Uh, thank you. This is our traditional memorial service where we always take time to remember those of us elders and ministers who have left us within uh, the year uh, so that we have a moment to pray for the families and also to remind ourselves that uh, we are also on this uh, journey and that this is not our home, and we are going. Every moment as we take uh, 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 this service, so that we remind again ourselves that we should be committed and we should desire to finish well as we serve our God. And therefore, this is another solemn moment 
where I invite the Deputy Secretary General to come and uh, read us uh, in mentioning the names of those ministers and elders who have left us within the year and then we'll have a moment to pray for, the, for their families. As it has been explained, the servants who are called to glory, Komothai Presbytery, Late Elder Peter Mboro Joguna, Late Elder Samuel Gitao Gatiba, Late Elder Edward Michuki Joguna, Late Reverend Geoffrey Ngare Yu, Remuru Presbytery, Late Elder Ephraim Ngoge Waigi, Kiamadare Presbytery, Late Elder Andy the Wajiko Richo, Late Elder David Carrera, Late Elder Peter Gedua Jogo, Rari Presbytery, Late Elder Joel Ikua Nganga, Kikuyu Presbytery, Late Elder David Bogua Wagata, Late Elder Peter Joguna Rubia, Rugere Presbytery, Late Elder Margaret Wajiko Kenyanjui, Late Elder Crispus Kamau, Late Elder JP Karanja, Kidunguri Presbytery, Late Elder Sebera Wajijo Getia, Late Elder Samuel Gachungi, Late Elder Ezron Mote, Late Elder Cyrus Karanja Kenyu, Katundo Presbytery, Late Elder Edwin Chege Migwe, Late Elder Dolcas Jerry Chege, Late Elder Peter Gachanja Mukora, Late Elder Janet Joki Jau, Muguga Presbytery, Late Reverend Moses Kiremi Mugambi, Late Elder Grace Jerry Kiangonyo, Moranga Presbytery, Late Elder Peter Mungai Mugoro, Late Elder Christopher Kamau Ngogi, Late Elder Nancy Wamaitha Muchoki, Late Elder James Bao Kinothia, Late Elder Mother Wanjiko Mwaura, Late Elder Phoebe Wanjiro Ngige, Late Elder William Wanyoike Kamau, Late Elder Moses Jombai Mukundi, and Late Elder James Kimani Jogona. Vika Presbytery, Late Elder Joseph Murigi Kihanya, Late Elder Esther Gadoni Dongo, Late Elder Anne Jerry Mburu, Late Elder Anne Wangechi Mwangi, Late Elder Simon Kimemia, Kiumbwini Presbytery, Late Elder Benson Kibue, Late Elder Josiah Kibe, Late Elder James Juguna Kenothia, Late Elder John Kariuki Getimu, Late Elder Peter Kariuki, Late Elder Ruth Wanjiko Mboi. Theridika Presbytery, Late Elder Mary Wangari Kirite, Kiambu Presbytery, Late Elder Joseph Mavela, Kambui Presbytery, Late Elder Esther Dugi Gadata, Late Elder Stanley Dicho Mbogua, Mount Kenya Region, Odaya Presbytery, Late Elder Gideon Nguje Shira, Late Elder Cornelius Degwa Kariuki, Late Elder Sarah Wajiko Mokua, Nyeri Presbytery. Late Elder Cyrus Mathenge Wagua, Late Elder Cyrus Mwithiga Waihenya, Late Elder Samuel Murage Wachuri, Late Elder Peter Degwa Waikumbo, Late Elder Philip Muiga Chorio, Late Elder Margaret Wangui Mwangi, Mukuroine Presbytery. Late Elder Gradwell Muthoni Wahome, Late Elder Charles Gethaiga Macharia, Late Elder Lucy Nyawera Deritu, Late Elder Gladys Diga, Late Elder Richard Gaita, Late Elder Nicholas Degwa Muchana, Late Elder Anne Wangari Maina, Tumutumu Presbytery, Late Elder Grace Wanja Jogu, Late Elder Patrick Karethi Huria, Late Elder Stephen Maina Kariri, Nanyuki Presbytery. Late Eonda Michael Gichuki Githae, Late Eonda Ephraim Kimodo Meano, Late Eonda Ephraim Githinji Wajau, Late Eonda John Nyamu Guadaru, Late Eonda Susan Wamboi Gishoi, Nyeri Hill Presbytery, Late Eonda Michael Murithi Marogoi, Late Eonda Eliud Washira Gitonga. Kirimara East Presbytery, Late Eonda Angela Muthoni Ngure, Late Eonda Rose Maina, Late Elder Eunice Moringo Mwangi, Late Elder Samuel Waidaka Ireri, Kirimara West Presbytery. Late Reverend Stephen Gatia Muna, 
late Reverend Stephen Michael Munene, late Elder Benson Gachwiri Kanywira, late Elder Bindan Wabu Karaibu, late Elder Peter Shira Wajo, Wajoi, late Elder Rendia Nyaguthi Wamai, late Elder Stephen Gomi, late Elder Monica Jerry Wanjoi. Nairobi Region, Gong Hills Presbytery. Late Eonda Samson Kariuki, Late Eonda Job Warimwe, Late Eonda Sarome Muigai, Late Eonda Agnes Marona, Late Eonda Peter Mbogua. Nairobi Central Presbytery, Late Eonda John Mwangi Dirango, Late Eonda Kavete Kimani, Mirimani North Presbytery. Late Eonda William Kachengo, Late Eonda Sara Wajiru Moinami, Kajiando Presbytery. Late Eonda Simon Wachira, Late Eonda Peter Kongo, Late Eonda Henry Dongo, Late Eonda John Jigicharu Mwaura, Late Eonda Abraham Kehara Yeshoha, Late Eonda Margaret Kibaria, Nairobi South Presbytery, Late Eonda David Wambogo, Nairobi North Presbytery, Late Eonda Esther Wajiko Dongo, Pwani Magaribi Presbytery, Late Eonda Aneta Mwamunga, Lifty Valley Region. Elbagon Presbytery, late Elder John Amboru, late Elder John Dongo Mudami, late Elder Ruben Kehoa Ngari, late Elder Henry Muchina, late Elder Edward Nganga, late Elder Paul Garoya, Nyaururu Presbytery, late Elder Julia Jerry Mogo, late Elder Nelson Motai Ruga, late Elder John Waidaka, late Elder Elijah Mwangi, late Elder Francis Jogona, Iriaini Presbytery. Late Eonda Stephen Kemanikibe, late Eonda Elijah Chegenganga, late Eonda Monica Wamboi Derito, Nakuru West Presbytery, late Eonda Mary Wanjiko, late Eonda Ruben Getonga Muchiri, Abadea Presbytery, late Eonda Joel Wakaiba Wangaruo, late Eonda Henry Ndongo Kenyara, late Eonda Rahab Nyambura Gitari, late Eonda Amos Mugambi Wangombe, late Eonda Rose Wamboi Kimondo, Nakuru East Presbytery, late Eonda Johanna Kamura, late Eonda Samuel Kiari Ngugi, late Eonda Mary Dongo, late Eonda Francis Derito, late Eonda Catherine Wangari Mburu, late Eonda Cecilia Wangari, late Eonda Lucy Muthoni, late Eonda Mwangi Kamura, Daragua Presbytery, late Eonda Daniel Muchemi, Late Eonda Esther Wambui Warutumo, Late Eonda Charles Gikonyo Wahome, Late Eonda Peter Derito Degwa, Kitare Presbyte, Late Eonda Vinjini Wangui Mbuthia, Late Eonda Peter Thande Joroge, Late Eonda Charles Kemani Wainaina, Late Eonda Mary Muthoni Gathendo, Late Eonda George Waburi Joguna, Late Eonda James Kaigo Kuria, Joro Presbyte, Late Eonda Ephantas Macharia, Rumuruti Presbytery, late Reverend Sos Peter Karoki Gogi, Nyandara Presbytery, late Elder Stephen Kenothia, late Elder Paris Jerry Karanja, late Elder Richard Kamau Jenga, late Elder Dolkas Muthoni Gure, Eastern Region, Chuka Presbytery, late Elder Jean Kari Mugambi, Chogoria South Presbytery, late Elder Zakayo Kamunde, late Elder Patrick Mathenge. Chogoria North Presbytery, late Elder Francis Kamunde, late Elder Faith Obend, late Elder Patrick Impungu, Imenti North Presbytery, late Elder Daniel Kaburu, late Elder Jotham Joe Imwara, late Elder Pamera Kithiro, late Elder Benjamin Guantai, Chogoria Central Presbytery, late Elder Tabitha Mukwanjeru Kithinji. Imenti South Presbytery, late Elder Jason Marete, late Elder Gilbert Mothamia, late Elder Samuel Irambu Gatugi, late Elder Evelyn Kanjiro Gitari, Magumoni Presbytery, late Elder Elishena Muthoni Gitari, late Elder Enfri Kenywa, and late Elder Ezekiel Nyaga Zakias. Thank you. Uh, moderator, those are the names, unless there is any omission which uh, we might include. 
there might be an omission and if there is an omission from your presbytery you had you can raise your hand and especially the clerks so that we can have them included any omission yes higher i'm trying there is a heart there well um, write it down and bring it please write it down write them down and bring them over so that they are also read uh, clerks if uh, you have omissions and not just omission if there is an, uh, somebody who passed on uh, shortly after you gave out the names, you can also include them uh, so that we can have their names. Kasi yangu kisha na mini kiyokoka na kufa kutoku harimbika Nita mwona mokozi nivika po Ata kuwa wa kwanza kunilaki Nita mjua Nita mjua Niki mwona uso kwa uso Nitamjua Nitamjua Kwa ramaza mishumari Na owari okufa katika mbwana yesu Nita waona tena hukonju Raki nini fika po kwa ke hukombinguni Nataka kumwona mokozi kwanza Nita mjua Nita mjua Kwa Uso kwa uso Nita mjua Nita mjua Kwa ramazmi Sumari Thank you Okay, as that one comes, moderator, we have additional names from Imenti Northi Presbytery, late Reverend Julius Kiremi Matthew, late Elder Margaret Makandi Kimathi. From Gidunguri Presbytery, late Elder Penina Wamweru Gaitho. From Nakuru East Presbytery, late Elder Elijah Buru from, from Eldoret Presbytery, late Reverend Benjamin Ruto, from Kieni West Presbytery, late Reverend Jamrik Muchangi Miano, and late Reverend Mathenge. Chogoria West, we have late Eonda Walter Nyaga. From Gidunguri, late Mrs. Kezia, elder Mrs. Kezia Gadecha. From the Ririka Presbytery, late elder Maura Muiruri. From Kirimara West, late elder Johnson Washira Gicheru, late elder James Gichoru. From Rimani South Presbytery, late elder Stephen Chege, 
late Eonda Francis Degwa. From Gatundu Presbytery, late Eonda Elizabeth Izeto. From Royro Presbytery, late Eonda Phoebe Kando Katiki. Kakiti. Kakiti. Maybe the last one is coming. Kenneth Kotut is reverend, please, sorry. From Imenti North, late Eonda Albert Mahiga. Thank you, Modita. My name is Late. My name is of real people. People who lived and served, people who worked, people who had families, people who are connected, people who are known. We know some, others we don't. Those who know them, memories are still strong. When they are read out, they still create sadness. However, that is the reality of life that we enter and at some point we exit. And usually when we write the, the eulogy or the biography of, of, a him, of a person, we give the year of birth, we give the year of death if they are dead, and then we put a dash between the two. So the year of birth, dash, year of death. The numbers look big on either side, the year of birth, and they look big, year of death. The Dutch looks small. Yet, that is where things are. That Dutch carries everything. Because that, that Dutch carries baptism, confirmation, ordination into eldership, into the ministry, marriage, family, work in the secular world, business and so on, within that dash. And that's why we are remembering the names that have been led because of how they utilized their dash. We wouldn't have remembered them if they never became elders, not that those who did not become should not be remembered at that level down there, but we are remembering them at the highest court of PCEA because of what happened within the dash. They got ordained into eldership or into the holy ministry, and they served in full. If they had fallen on the wayside, they would not be part of the memory of the service that we are doing today. However, again, it is well underlined in the Bible that there is life before death, but there is also life after death. And uh, this being the season of Easter, we know that after death, there was a resurrection. So, take joy in knowing that already you have life before death, but again, take even more joy to know that there will be life after death since we are part of the Easter story, and Apostle Paul talks about the same in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, where he says, Therefore, stand firm, let nothing move you, or give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. He is addressing life after death. So what we do in this life, the fact that we shall die should not make us demoralized. Because we know, as that's Paul, what is Paul, Paul is saying, that our labor in the world is not in vain. Because our labor in the world, life before death. It's not in vain because there is life after death. I want to invite Moderator Gadanju to do a prayer.
na tusimame tuchukue dakika moja tufikirie hata hali yetu vile tutakuwa tukikubukwa Tunakushukuru sana baba mwenyezi tukiwa kikao hiki kimewekwa wakfu wazee wa kanisa walisunguka wakiwa na wachukaji na washirika wakitufuata na wakati hapa tuko tunakupuka wapenzi wetu wakiwa ni wazazi wakiwa ni ndugu wakiwa ni wadada wakiwa marafiki ukubusho mkubwa ya kwamba hata sisi tunapita tunakushukuru kwa kazi nzuri walifanya walibatiza walifanya mengi katika nyumba yako walifanya mengi katika familia walifanya mengi katika nchi hii na dunia nzima na tukiwa tumekaa kimya tunakubuka hata roho zetu hata sisi tuko kwa jia hiyo hiyo tu so tunakushukuru sana baba mwenyezi kwa kutupa uhai kwa kutupa fikra nzuri na hasa kutu, kutuita kila mtu wetu tuwe watumishi wako kwa jia tofauti tunakubuka wale wako na huzuni hata wakati huu wengine wameachwa na wapenzi wao wengine wako hali mahututi na familia wako na huzuni god we pray and remember those in distress in grief that you may encourage them hata kanisa lenyewe tuwe tumasimama imara we pray for your guidance we pray for your counseling we pray for your joy we pray for each day tunapita tunakushukuru tukiwa na matumaini hata kesho tutakuwa hai kaa pamoja nasi na wale wetu wameenda bere zetu ni maombi yetu ni matumaini yetu wako pamoja na wewe huko biguni na tutawakuta huku tukikaa pamoja na wao give them strength and courage to face the challenges of their time even courage at times of grieving in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit we pray and believe amen, amen. na tuketi Yeah, the mic person is uh, delaying a little bit, kindly. Uh, thank you. Uh, so this time we are going to have our reading, which is going to come from the book of Joshua, uh, chapter number 24, from verses 1 through to 15. Good morning and praise God. Praise the Lord. God is good and all the time. And that is his nature. My name is Serafin Rugo. I'm born again. Our reading is going to come from the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 1 to 15. Joshua 24, 1 to 15. And I read. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders 
leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your forefathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the river and worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the river and led him throughout Canaan and gave him my descendants. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I assigned the hill country to sell to, of sell to Esau. But Jacob and his sons went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there, and I brought you out. When I brought your forefathers out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued them with chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea. But they cried to the Lord for help, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and covered them. You saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians. Then I lived in the desert for a long time. I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them from before you, and you took possession of their land. When Balak, son of Sipor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel, he sent for Balaam, son of Beor, to put a curse on you. But I would not listen to Balaam, and he blessed you again and again, and I delivered you out of his hand. Then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho fought against you, as did also the Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Gargashites, Hivites, and Jebusites. But I gave them into your hands. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove them out before you. Also, the two Amorite kings, you did not do it with your own sword and bow. So I gave you a land on which you did not toil and cities you did not build. And you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord, the word of God. Uh, so that we prepare ourselves to hear the word of God, we'll be uh, up studying, and uh, we'll be read by the choir with the song, Man of Solos, hymn number 380. To Simame, ili tuongozwe na choir kwa wibo, Man of Solos.
please be seated. Good morning. Praise be to God. This is another gift from God to be alive and to be serving for you and me. We are in a memorial service. There's nothing that we have done that has made God to allow us not to be part of the list that was read. Because the men and women whose names were read were of the same model that you are made of. They were men and women of flesh, of blood, of bones, and all that makes you. Therefore, we have a gift that we need to utilize well because in God's time, we shall be part of that list. Going forward, in God's time, we also, that will happen because it is the tradition of the Presbyterian Church of East Africa. If you started and you finished fairly free, you qualify to be in that list. So you are in that list in waiting. Kwa hiyo list wewe ni mutarajiwa. Hiyo abaye tumesoma kwa sababu kila mtu ambaye ni mshugaji, elder, anakualify kuigia kwa list hiyo. Na unaona hata tulikuwa tunasubiri yogezwe. Ni vile hatu kiogeza wale wako hai. Tulikuwa tunauliza kunaye abaye jina lake limeachwa because we want to be sure that we remember those. So, this gift of life is a unique gift to serve, to repent, because that is the way it should be. The text has been laid clearly to us. It is a text that we read many times during the life of the 24th General Assembly because that is where our theme is derived from in Joshua chapter 24 verse 15 we will serve the Lord the primary we will serve the Lord is in verse 15 and that is where our theme is but in the same chapter there are several other we will serve the Lord it is Joshua who said it, and the people responded that they will serve the Lord. So if you read verse 18 of the same chapter, you will encounter the same. We will serve the Lord. If you read verse 21, we will serve the Lord is again documented. Verse 22, again, we will serve the Lord. Verse 24, and I was getting persuaded to pick it from there, but I remember it's a, it's a secondary, we will serve the Lord. The primary one is in verse 15, but uh, verse 24 was rhyming very well with the year 2024, 24th General Assembly, theme of Joshua 24, 24. So there was that persuasion, but then the primary, we will serve the Lord, is in verse 15. That's why we skipped verse 24. But again, if you read it, the people are saying to Joshua, we will serve the Lord. Let us pray. This is your message from your good book. It has shaped people in history. It is shaping people today. And we surrender and yield to you for that shaping. May it happen through your word that cuts and pierces the souls of people. We are keen to hear during this memorial service. Our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. One thing that comes out in the narrative that Joshua gave before he made the statement is the grace of God, the graciousness of God. Because from that narrative, God has done just too much for these people. He has done a lot for these people. But he is still giving them an option if they wish not to serve him. If it were you and me, 
we wouldn't give them that option. For a people who you have done so much for them, verse 15 starts by saying, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served before the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. So this surprises us because this is a God who has done so much for people. He does not demand them to serve him simply because I have done the following for you. Again, he never negotiated for them to serve him at the point where his journey with them started. Because humanly, they should have signed an MOU on the, after Passover. They ought to have been signing of MOU. There is a journey ahead. I'll walk with you. There will be a Red Sea. I'll carry you across. You'll get into the wilderness. There will be bitter waters. I'll make the waters purified for you. You will not lack clothing. You will not lack footwear. The Amalekites will lay against you. I'll help you to conquer the Amalekites. You'll be attacked by snakes. I will provide healing from the attack of the snakes. You know, God, I'm leading the list of God, of what you do to, to them. There is a time you won't lost meat. I will provide meat. You will eat it until it gets out through your nostrils. That's what the Bible says. I will give them meat until it gets out through their nostrils. I'll give you meat and adequate meat. Wanaume bwana sifiwe? Eh. Nyama iko nyingi. Hakuna mwanaume ageashwa Misri kusikia kwamba kutakuwa na nyama kwa fujo mahali tuedako. Then I'll make sure you have there's no vacuum. You always have a leader. When Moses exit, there will be smooth transition. And there was smooth transition because Joshua was an experienced man when he took office. He was an experienced man having started the journey together uh, with Moses and again having been one of the spies who went to the promised land. So you can see how God has done much for these people. So if he was you and me, the MOU need to have been signed the day after Passover. That this is what I'll do for you. On condition, your side of the MOU. You will serve me. To kubariana mapema. Sababu mapema di your best. Kwa ba hii safari tunayenda. Mi mi ni ta do the following. You may not match what I will do for you. But as a result of what I will do for you, you must append your signatures here and a passport size photograph. You must also upload your PIN number that you'll be paying tithe, you must also promise me that when we get into the land where I'm taking you, you will not look at any other God. Sababu hata kwa harusi si watu wanapeana viyapo pale mwanzo. Ati utakuwa wangu, wangu peke yake, hakuta kuwa, siyo badai ni mwanzo. Mukieda huko mwone miugumigine, you will not be attracted to those gods. And you see how they have beautiful names. You know, Perisites, Canaanites had their gods, Hittites, Gigachites, Hivites, Jebusites. I also add parasites. <laughs> because they are all Edegrists. However, we realize that this God is gracious. He does not give any condition ahead of deliverance. It is only after they had made a long journey, including the crossing of River Jordan, which was a big gift. You remember there was no bridge, they went across. Again, remember what happened in Jericho, the fortified city. How did they overcome it? A walk in the park. Just walk aloud. Seven days. On the seventh day, walk aloud seven times. And then at the end of it, shout. 
and the way we know how to shout. What is difficult about that? God does not lay any conditions to the people until he has done so much for them that it is, appears they can have no other choice but to serve the Lord. Yet, even at this moment, the people are being told to make a choice. If you wish to serve those gods that have done nothing for you, that is verse 15, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves. I wouldn't allow people such a choice. I wouldn't allow my children to serve any other father other than me. Knowing how I have invested in them. Knowing all I have put in them. And then ati wansimame hapo waniyabie ati tukubaliane watatumikia nani. Kwa nani? Lakini huyu mungu kwa ukarimu mkubwa anawabia wa Israeli if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve they are even given the options of who, of who they can serve imagine unawabia watoto wako ati umdaeza kuwa wababa furani na hakuna DNA inaonyesha ni wake ati you are telling them they can belong to another family you can choose the other gods that you, your father served before they came, you, before I engaged them, that is Terah, the father of Abraham and others. You can choose those gods. That's an option. You can also choose the option of the gods of this place. You have so many options. Tea, coffee, chocolate. All those are on offer. You can choose this day who you'll serve whether the gods of your ancestors before they served before, even they are told where you can fight. They are given a, a pin. You know, the gods your ancestors served before beyond Euphrates. See only ni pin. Kama munashida kutafuta mugu wa kuabudu, kuna miugu. Ilikuwa inaabudiwa na mabuzenu beyond river Euphrates. Or the gods of the Amorites. Hawa kokaribu. In whose land you are living. It's a walking distance. What a gracious God we belong to. Who gives us choices when we should not have choices. Who gives us liberty when we should not have liberty. Is this the God talked about in the book of Revelation chapter 3? That I am at the door knocking. If you open the door, I'll come in. Meaning we have a choice not to open one of these days, God forbid, if the police came at your door and wanted to come in, you know what they say. That is Greek. They ask you whether you'll open the door or they break it. You have no choice not to open because they have a way of opening that door. If you will not open it peacefully, they will break the door. But God is telling people, you can still choose those other gods and life continues. I think that is what now should endear us to serving that God. If that is the kind of God we have, for sure, that is the God we should serve. If that is the heart of our God, if that is the grace of our God, if he is such a kind, magnanimous God, that is the God we should serve. I don't see us considering the gods of the Amorites and the gods of beyond liver Euphrates. I don't see it as a choice. Much as it is offered because he is at the door knocking, if we hear his voice and open, then we can go in and fellowship. He can come in and we fellowship with him. If that is the kind of God who is calling himself unto us, then that is the God we should serve. When we say we will serve the Lord, it is not a God who is not tested. They are gods who have never been tested. In other faith, they are gods that are not tested. They are people who believe in gods who they have never accessed. 
who have never come to live among them. Yet our God is Emmanuel. God with us. He is a God who is tested. There are people who worship God who are remote. They are always transcendent. But our God is transcendent and and immanent. Theologians. See, we worship a transcendent God, yet he is immanent. God with us. That is the God inviting you to serve him. That should not be difficult. That should not be hard. It is difficult for us to be loyal to forces and powers that are not close to us. And that's why free, freedom fighters sought for independence because they were ruled by a queen. And the queen was miles away. Yet the government officers during the colonial days would put some inscription on their cloth. O H M S on her majesty's service. And this majesty was in London, Birmingham, Buckingham Palace. She had before she was she became queen, she had come to Kenya. But after she became queen, by the time we were living in colonial days, she hadn't come. And that's why our forefathers were very upset that they were being ruled by a woman. And do you know what a woman meant those days? They were being ruled by a woman they had not seen. The one they had seen from my community had not been very gracious to them. <laughs> Those from that community understand that there was a leader, a woman leader, who was very hard on men because there were no chairs at the stools. So when she came visiting, the men knew what would happen. She would start, sit on your back. So she did not have to carry a chair as long as there are men where she was visiting. So I guess her question was, Kule naenda, kuna wanaume? Alabiwa? Wako. Haya basi. Musibebe kiti. Wanaume ni wakukariwa. Na di unasikia hata wanaume siku hizi wanaonya wakezao. Usinikarie. Kwa sababu wadajua vile walikariwa na huyo mama. However, the point I'm making is that the colonial government made people very upset because they were serving a god or serving a leader who they could not see. So people are not very happy to, to worship a god they cannot see. But our god has been seen. He has lived in the world. There is evidence that he was in the world. Read the Gospels and the entire New Testament. He was seen. He was around. In fact, the dispute was whether he was God. But the fact that he was around is not disputed. He was around. It's the only dispute was he is the son of Joseph. His brothers and sisters are known. Even the Muslims will say he was around. There is no dispute about that he was in the world. Therefore, when you and me are called to serve a God who comes that close to us, we should understand. We should worship him. Hence, going forward, people of God, men and women of God. If this is the kind of God we are introduced to, a God who does so much for you before demanding anything from you, that is a God we should serve. A God who does not ask you to sign an MOU in advance. On the day that you engage, he doesn't give you conditions. He just gives you a lot of grace. Then many, many, many years later, this must have been over. These were two generations. And he's now saying, okay, this is what I have done for you. Serve me. But if you still don't want to serve me, you have a choice. I hear like, for me, there is no other choice. Much as there is a choice, for me, there is no choice. God cannot do that for me, and then I take any other choice. Much as it's an option, I would say like Joshua, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You too, 
I don't want you to ever contemplate the other choice. We will serve the Lord. PCA, we will serve the Lord. Because if he is such a God who does not put conditions for us to receive blessings or to be in his ministry, if that is the God who is calling us and inviting us, then we will serve the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you so much. I now request before we uh, go for the Holy Communion, a ritual change, uh, we do our offering. Let us have our offering, then we get into the Holy Communion. So as we do that, I request the choir to be presenting a number. <coughs> Praise the Lord. It's time for offering just before the choir sings. To give the offering, the deacons will wait upon us. If you will use your phone, you may use the pay bill number 903-800. It is projected. Then account GA. So pay bill number 903-800. Account write GA. And it is done. Deacons kindly wait upon us, and as that happens, the choir. Renew, 
with us giving and offering in our hearts, O oh God, and we start in the cognition of who you are and as an offering that we belong to you and that we are ready to serve you, O oh God. We pray that you sanctify the offerings that we've offered, that many shall come to the knowledge and relationship with you even through the use of these resources. Bless those who've given, O oh God, and remember the many who may not be having anything to offer this day that we shall provide unto them. These are prayer of faith and as giving, and we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Morita, it's now time for the Holy Communion. Thank you. We we get to our liturgy. 
What shall we render to the Lord for all his bounty to us? And call on the name of the Lord. We will fulfill our vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Christ, our Passover love, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord, your God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself in a graven image. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet anything that is your neighbor's. Beloved in the Lord, you who truly repent of your sins, who seek to be in fellowship with your neighbors and to lead the new life in Christ, draw near with faith and hear the gracious words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never be hungry. He who believes in me shall never be thirsty. thirsty. He who comes to me I will not cast out. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, and that they may fervently love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. I now ask us to rise so that we can confess what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered at a point of spirit, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Shall we take our seats? Narrative of the institution. Ye are the ones of the institution of the Lord's Supper. According to St. Paul, the tradition which I handed on to you came to me from the Lord himself. For I received from the Lord what I also passed unto you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is indeed right. It is, a, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, for the majesty of your glory, the wonder of your works, the riches of your grace. Therefore, with your people in all places and times and with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your greatness and sing your praise in the ages song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Truly holy, truly blessed are you, almighty and merciful God, who so loved the world that you gave your only Son, and that whosoever believes in him may have eternal life. Not as we ought, but as we are able. We bless you for his holy incarnation, for his perfect life on earth, for his sufferings and death on the cross, for his glorious resurrection and ascension, for his continual intercession and rule that you are light, at your light heart, for the gift of your Holy Spirit and the promise of his coming again. Wherefore, we, your servants, set both this memorial which he has commanded us to make, and we humbly pray you to set down your Holy Spirit to sanctify us and to sanctify these your gifts of bread and wine, which we here set before you, that the bread which we break may be to us the communion of the body of Christ, and the cup of blessing which we bless, the communion of the blood of Christ, that we, receiving them, may by faith be partakers of his holy body and blood with all his benefits to our, to our spiritual nourishment and growth in grace and the glory of your most holy name. Here, O oh Lord, we present ourselves to you. Take a moment to present yourself to God. We present ourselves to you, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. And we ask you, you mercifully, to accept this, our offering of thanksgiving and praise, and in fellowship with all the faithful in heaven and on earth, we pray you to fulfill in us and in all men the purpose of your redeeming love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's uh, say the Lord's Prayer, our Father. Amen. Amen. And now, according to the holy institution, example, and command of our Lord Jesus Christ, and as a memorial of him, we do this, who on the night he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen? Amen. Thank you. So I'll invite the SG and DSG to come and distribute these elements to those who are here. Then after that is done, together we will take the communion, distribute to those who are here. Okay, those who will be participating in distribution, the elders could come close here. Those who will be participating in the distribution, so you receive your elements and hold them until it is time. Be upstanding, please, as you do that. The elders who will be participating in the distribution of elements should also come over so that they receive the elements. Hold your element. Start testing. It has a pin for you to open. Check whether you know the pin. Test it whether it can open. your heart. Call this number. If it's not working, is it working? You have the blood lady. So remembering that Christ on that night partook bread and told the disciples, this is my body broken for you. In memory of that, we eat the bread. Again, in memory, that on that night, after they had eaten, he took the cup, and they partook the cup together. Let's take the cup. Thank you. Now can start now. Get ready to distribute the element. Drop. Once we have dropped it, those who have been assigned the various heads, or maybe we need to give instructions to the membership as to what they should do. Yes. Um, for the communion, we will have three serving points two here, then one at the middle, and another serving point at the back. You will get a cup, and the cup on top is bread. So you open, the first part is bread, the second part is the wine. And so the process is, we will have the two serving points here, then at the middle and at the back. You rise and come pick, then go sit down, Open the first part, we have the bread. Second part is the wine, and the communion is done. And so in terms of coming, we will come in two lines and go round uh, back to our seats, the same at the center and at the back. Uh, thank you. Thank you. The instructions are so given. So can we start, start working? Of course, there is a choice. There is wine that is mild. I don't know whether it's wine. 
and there is the one that we are used to so all both are available so choose today which one you want to take <laughs> the strong wine or the mild one okay
to the liturgy. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. We will be seated so that we can listen to a number of announcements. We thank the Lord for the Father that he has taken us. We are done with the service. We have some few announcements, and one is uh, about the parking. We have some of us who have parked along the roads outside here, and we want to advise you that it is not safe. There is the parking that has been procured where we had parked yesterday. Please ensure that you park there. But again, those who came in the morning and parked, we have a number of us who double parked. And therefore, you see a vehicle is parked, and another one is parked, and a very big space, but there's no other vehicle that can be parked there. We encourage that uh, when we are parking, ensure that you do not double park. We want to encourage all the commissioners and delegates to be on their name tax. We have a number of us who do not have them. We would want to ensure that we have a very good order. But also when we go there, we want to encourage all the commissioners and delegates to sit on the ground floor. We have some who are sitting up there, and maybe when you are called, it takes time. Because the brigades want to ensure that it's only visitors who sit up there. So please, let us take our right positions. Yes, ninaelezewa clear kuna watu walienda kupaka huko kwa university lakini hawakuingiza magari yao ndani wamepaka kwa barabara. Kwa hivyo kama hukuingiza gari yako ndani hakikisha kwamba umeenda na umeingiza ndani. Kutoka hapa we will go for team break. Please let us ensure that we take 30 minutes only to finish that exercise so that we are able to continue with the business of the day. So worship team hospitality yes hospitality do that so that we can have the money to finish for us wale watu wote wako katika kamati ya worship wakutane room 15 message to the congregation waachwe hapa tukimaliza Elizabeth. Praise the Lord. Uh, we want to say that yesterday we know it didn't go well because of the disorganization that we experienced. But today we have tried. We want to allocate you where you'll be taking your tea. The GA officials and their spouses, past moderators and their spouses, and the former GA officials, they will take their tea at the backstage. Then we have the session hall is for the secretariat and the GA preparation committee. Please, only those two teams. Then the church hall, we have relocated the business committee. They will not use the tent again at the kindergarten. They will use the church hall. It is well prepared, kindly go there. And the business committee will also be joined by any of our invited guests. They will join them there. Then we have the ministers and the elders active their tent is right here behind the sanctuary where we were using yesterday. And then at the paved area here, we have the security, the staff, and St. Andrew's staff, and then the choirs. And then the tent at the kindergarten, we have the retired ministers and the retired elders. I hope now we are good to go. We are better than yesterday. Please pardon us. Let us give thanks. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for giving us an opportunity to be together this day. And even now that you have given us something to eat, we receive it with thanksgiving. We pray that it will nourish our bodies as we wait on you for more of the spiritual food. This we ask in Jesus' name. Thank you. Preparing for benediction, 
I want to invite Moderator Jesse Kamau to not only give us benediction, but also remember our church father, very Reverend George Wajau, who has been unwell in the hospital, at Karen Hospital. He has been there for a number of days. He was the moderator of the 11th and 12th General Assembly. He has served in this congregation since 1968, when he came in the, during the indigenization of, the, of this church. This was a Scottish church. You are lucky to be seated where you are. This was for Scottish men and women. So he came here in 1968 to serve as a Scottish minister, but then took charge thereafter. So very David, Dr. George Wajau has been aiding, and he is in the hospital. So I want to invite Moderator Jesse to come over and pray for our father, even as he gives us the benediction. Karibu. Good morning. The mysteries of faith is that while we are down here on earth, we are connected with God mysteriously in heaven. And through faith as an umbilical cord, something special, unique is given to us as part of our blessing to keep us alive Keep us going, keep us shining, no matter what the situation may be. And those who use the word to be invigorated, there is something of God that will be injected in you and empower you. Communion connects us with the God. And as we have the theme of serving, then it will give you vigor. You are energized, invigorated to offer yourself now in service. Let us pray. Father God, we lift our hearts to thank you in that you are so loving Love that is revealed to us in many, many, many ways. The death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ in his uh, unique way of uh, keeping us alive, empowered and invigorated, he gave us a communion that we do this as often as we can. And by doing so, we are united between here and heaven and with one another. That we can be able to witness and that we can be able to serve and that we can be able to survive in this bad world like there is no trouble because we are connected in faith. We thank you, God. And it's our prayer that during this 24th General Assembly, that we shall not be there, to be there talking, talking, but be a moment when we also receive equipment that will make us be able to go uphill, downhill, day after day, year after year, serving, 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 and even as we continue to, um, to uh, unfold in service, pouring life in service sharing ourselves to others in service, communicating your love to others through witness. We shall emulate Jesus Christ 
who gave his life on the cross. We've just remembered our brothers and sisters and many others whose names were not mentioned who were faithful till the last hour. We don't know even before the hour they were taken what you were saying to them and what they were saying to you. We don't know. But the dash we have been told between the birth date and the day we go help us to be very conscious and careful and accurate in what we do that we may be exercising our faith even as we serve you and as we serve one another even as we serve ourselves. We together, God in faith, remember many, many, many ailing brothers and sisters. Some of them are our parents, others are grandparents, others are people who have been there in the field serving, serving, serving. Even when the situation was terrible and difficult, they continued to serve. And particularly, even as we have remembered many, many others, and other, other names were not mentioned because maybe we, didn't, we were not prepared to mention their names, we want to remember a servant who has been instrumental in this building, instrumental in the church, a man who has been our moderator. And we do remember his seriousness in his faith. Now that he is now lying helpless in the hospital, in HDU at Nairobi, current hospital. And the moment we go there and try to talk to him, he cannot see us, he cannot listen to us because the condition does not allow him. Then God, you speak to him because you have a method of reaching him. In his moment of silence, only you and the, Holy, and the Holy Spirit can be able to reach him. However, whatever in him is still remaining alive, ready for communication, Lord, speak to your servant. We will remember Mary Wajau. Mrs. Wajau, uh, she will be looking and watching helplessly. That instead of being threatened by the condition of her husband, that be like we see fire fund and then it, it, it lights up, let the Holy Spirit empower her. And that even in a condition like this one, she can be able to give a testimony of who you are and how you are shepherding her and the family. And even a song that one can sing in a moment of pain, in a moment of pain, in a moment of anxiety, that instead of worry, to trust you, to trust you. We thank you for the many people who have been good examples. And during these days when we shall be talking about service, teach us more. Because in your demonstration, Jesus Christ, you went on the cross to show us what it means to be a servant. We too, Help us to emulate you. And during this general assembly, as we interact with each other, and as we listen to you, and as we shall be having times to re read scripture like we did this morning, and as we shall be talking about what has been going on here and there, talking about service, 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 help us to be serious, accurate, and to speak the truth. And if it requires adjustment, let this be a moment when we can be adjusted so that we fit in. We fit in and we shall be found successful witnessing as we serve. We lift up our hearts to you in reciprocation of the communion we have received 
And because we were supposed to remember you, yes, Lord, we remember you. And when we remember you, we want to come to you. We want to serve you. We want to belong to you. We want you to unite us to reconcile and be there, God, who broke the body of your son to unite the broken world. Be with us, God. And because this is not a day of preaching, it's a day of business, when we get into the business, help us to be business-like and be accurate as we lift you up. All honor and glory and praise be to you. And the multiples of blessings from you, God the Father, Blessings that are so unique that they permeate and penetrate and lift the broken and invigorate the weak be bestowed unto us in their multiplicity. Amen. Amen. peace of God that surpasses human understanding keep us and may the blessings of God be with us now and forevermore.